Welcome to part four of my daily iPad workflow. In this part, we're gonna be covering all the hardware I use with my iPad. I'll put links to all the previous parts in the description below, along with links to everything I talk about in this video. So let's get going. Throughout the years of working on my iPad, I've tried a ton of different desk setups. I've used monitors, different keyboards, different stands, and I think I finally landed on the setup that I really like. I designed it to be a much more ergonomic setup because of the fact when working on an iPad, it's, well, not ergonomic. I used a Lamical laptop stand paired with the Magic Keyboard, which we'll talk about in a bit and I'll explain why, but this makes the iPad at a much more ergonomic height for somebody like me. I'm 6'1", so I'm a bit tall, so it's hard to find a stand that will properly fit my height while sitting at the correct height as well. To pair with the laptop stand, I use a Keychron K2 mechanical keyboard. This is a wireless mechanical keyboard. Now, if you've been around this channel for long, you know I have a huge love affair with mechanical keyboards. I love the clickiness, I love the sounds. Personally, I really like the blue switches, but there's a lot of different switch combos you can pick from that have different feels and different sounds. This keyboard also has backlighting, which is really cool, but personally, I don't use it. I'm in a pretty well-lit office and I just don't find that I need it. But if you're somebody that works in like a dark editing room or something like that, backlighting is important to have. One thing that I will note that it is a wireless mechanical keyboard and if you use backlighting, it will drain the battery really fast, but you can use this keyboard in a wired mode. Next to the Keychron K2 keyboard, I have the Apple Magic Trackpad 2. This is a great trackpad. Apple really knows how to make a good trackpad. It's big, it supports all the fun gestures that iPad OS can support, and it just it pairs well with this setup. Because I'm trying to be more ergonomic, that means I need to have my hands down at the desk while looking straight ahead. I don't wanna constantly have to be reaching up and tapping on the iPad screen. I wanna just be able to keep my hands down so I can have the trackpad down here. I can use the cursor support, swipe to go home, swipe in between apps and all that fun stuff. Also with having a trackpad, it makes it really easy to control PCs and Macs for my day job, which I talked about in part two of this series. I actually really like the way Apple rethought the cursor. I'm glad they just didn't port over the Mac cursor and just call it a day. They really rethought it and for a touch environment. So it's a dot instead of a pointer to you know represent a finger. It snaps to buttons to feel a little more natural. And then one thing kind of like what the Mac and PC does is the cursor will change based on where it is. So apps can change the way the cursor looks and works based on where you are in the UI. But when I'm not sitting at the desk, I use the Magic Keyboard everywhere else. The Magic Keyboard is probably my favorite piece of tech that's come out in 2020. Yes, this does turn my iPad into a laptop, but I still don't want to use a traditional MacBook or even a PC laptop. I like the iPad. The iPad is my favorite computer. And this gives me the best input method to use my iPad as a computer. I use this whenever I'm sitting on the couch or at this desk or in that chair back there, or even at my day job, this is the keyboard that I use there. But when I want a tablet, it's easy to just pop off the iPad and use it as a tablet. One thing that did worry me when I first got the Magic Keyboard was that I thought the trackpad was too small, but honestly, it's not. I got used to it really quickly, and I don't even notice that it's a lot smaller than the Magic Trackpad 2 is. It just kind of feels natural when I'm typing to kind of just reach down and use it really quick. Trackpad support has been game changing for the iPad, and it's probably the biggest update this year to the iPad. Even though we've had new iPad Pros and iPad OS 14, I would still say the trackpad is the most important update. The extra USB-C port on the Magic Keyboard 2 has been extremely helpful. When I'm at my day job, I use an external monitor there to kind of, again, keep things a little more ergonomic. But I keep the iPad and the Magic Keyboard right in front of the monitor, so that's the keyboard and trackpad I use while I'm at work. I use the extra USB-C port to charge the iPad, while the USB-C port on the iPad I can use to plug into the monitor. This way, I don't have to buy an extra dock just to charge my iPad and use a monitor at the same time. Speaking of docks, CalDigit sent me their USB-C Pro Hub about a year or so ago, and it's hands down been my favorite USB-C hub, accessory, dock, whatever. It's a great piece of tech to have on your desk. What's cool about this is it does support USB-C, but it also supports Thunderbolt as well. 
It's full USB 3.1 Gen 2 or USB 3.2, whatever the USB consortium's calling it these days. That means it can support the full 10 gigabits per second of the iPad Pro's USB-C port. It also has its own power supply, so that means it's not relying on bus power, which makes things faster. It has a large array of ports, a display port, ethernet port, couple of USB-A, USB-C, headphone jack, SD card reader, basically anything I could need, it's there. So whenever I'm done recording these videos, I can pop out the SD card from the camera, transfer them over to my iPad using that hub, it's incredibly fast. Then I take that footage and back it up to an external hard drive that I have constantly plugged into that dock. I've talked about this before. I really wish the iPad had some sort of local backup system like Time Machine. The iCloud backup to me isn't enough. Uh, that's just backing up an image of the iPad. So if something were to ever happen and I deleted some footage or something locally off my iPad, I would A, have to hope my iPad has been backed up and then B, wipe my iPad and restore it. That doesn't sound like a fun day to me. Out of the last two generations of the iPad Pro and the newly announced iPad Air, I would say the biggest update to them is actually the USB-C port. Now let me explain. I know the display is great, the Magic Keyboard's awesome, but USB-C is faster than lightning, so that's important for people that do creative work like what I'm doing right now and need to transfer video files or photos or whatever to their device. But on top of that, it makes the iPad closer to a traditional computer. So it's kind of bridging the gap between, you know, the old iPad of it just being a tablet and a traditional PC or MacBook. It's really making a hybrid computer. Plus this also means you can use docks, drives, whatever, without needing an adapter for lightning. I am a huge fan of the fact that USB-C is on the iPad Pros and now the iPad Air. And I really hope to see USB-C to go to all Apple devices. It would be really nice to only really need that one cable. I use the Sony WH-1000X M3 headphones. These are our wireless noise canceling headphones. Now there is a new version of these out. I don't have the newest version. Honestly, I don't feel the need to upgrade to the newest version. These are fine. Like the, they, they do the job. They're excellent noise canceling headphones. And the reason why I got them, and, and I've told this story before, but I have a window right here and right on the other side of that window is a sidewalk. And my neighbors really like to stand right there and have extremely loud conversations while I'm trying to work. Not exactly fun. And especially with somebody that has ADHD, that just pulls my attention. So these headphones help block out the noise when I'm writing, answering emails, doing whatever. Now, I don't like to use these for editing video or audio. I, I don't like using any wireless headphones for that just because latency. Now, latency on these headphones, I don't notice it. I could sit there and watch a movie, but I'm afraid like it would crop up the one time I decide to use them to edit a video and then all the audio would be off. If you're somebody that struggles with focusing, I highly recommend picking up some noise canceling headphones. It doesn't necessarily have to be these, uh, but I do recommend these. These are very good. The AirPods Pro are also good noise canceling headphones. I just have a problem with getting the ear fit test to pass with me. I tried all the different sizes and, and they don't seem to pass for some reason. Uh, so when I really need noise canceling headphones, I use the Sony headphones. Charging is an important part of working off an iPad. When you buy an iPad Pro, it does come with a charging brick. It's fine, but I recommend picking up a fast charger. Now, a fast charger for an iPad Pro is a 30 watt charger, but I have a better solution than just buying Apple's charger. Anchor makes the 60 watt USB-C charger that has two USB-C ports in it. So when you use both USB-C ports, each port drops down to a 30 watt charger. Again, still fast charging for the iPad Pro. So I could charge my iPad Pro and my Apple Watch or iPad Pro and iPhone or iPad Pro and Switch or whatever combination you want. It's incredibly handy to have. I use these at work. I leave them in my backpack. This is my go-to charger. Now there is a cheaper version that is a 36 watt charger. Uh, if you use both ports, they will drop down to 18 watts each. Still fast enough to charge an iPad Pro and whatever else you need if you just wanna save that extra money. It won't charge as fast, but if you don't need that, that's perfectly fine. The other kind of charger that I would recommend to anyone have in their travel bag 
is a external battery charger. So I have an Inky 20,000 milliamp charger. This is enough to charge my iPad if I'm away from power. I could be traveling if I'm up in the woods taking photos. I could charge my camera from this. I could charge my iPad. I could charge whatever I need to. What I like about this one when I got it, and this was a couple years ago, is it was the only one at the time, and I'm sure there's new ones now that have it, that both could charge the device via USB-C, but could output power via USB-C. And USB-C is important to me because that's the only kind of cable I keep in my bag. So I'll keep like a USB-C to USB-C cable, USB-C to lightning, and USB-C to micro USB because cameras. One, one tip that I do recommend to everyone is if you do need to carry multiple different cables to charge your devices, get different color ones. Yeah, I know it doesn't look as good, but when you look in your bag and you're like, oh, hey, I need my USB-C to lightning cable. I know that's the white cable. I look at my bag, I don't have to look at the ends. I just grab the white cable and I know that's the USB-C to lightning cable. The Apple Pencil is also a very important hardware accessory to the iPad. Now, I can't draw and my handwriting is terrible. So my ability to push the Apple Pencil is severely limited. But what I do use it for, especially when I'm away from like a trackpad and keyboard, is for editing videos and editing photos. It's just nice to hold the iPad in one hand and use the Apple Pencil to kind of navigate the UI to make any edits, especially for editing photos. I just, for some reason, there's something about it that I really like for that. If I do need to handwrite something out, I've been using apps like GoodNotes and BlankBook to kind of write things out. I don't do this very often anymore, to be honest. Uh, I'm much faster at typing than I am at handwriting. It's just, you know, being a millennial, I guess. I've also been messing around with Procreate 2 to kind of work on upping my thumbnail game for these videos. That's actually been something that's really interesting, but I'm still pretty fresh at it, so maybe I'll save that for another video. So that's it for part four. Like I mentioned, links to everything will be in the description below. Part five is going to be all about creativity apps, so be sure to subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.